we'll get that fixed next time, but um, it is August 11th, and we are uh, once again downtown in the uh, fascinating studios of WLUW with our guests. We're trucking them up here, trucking them down here, I should say, from the beautiful corner of Glenwood and Lunt, which has been beautiful, shining, and serving you for 36 years today. Happy anniversary, Michael. Hey, it's good to be here. Um, we had hoped to have our equipment ready and be back up there at the very lovely corner of Glenwood and Lunt, but uh, we are honored to be here in the WLUW studios here at 26 East Pearson. Uh, it's, it's high tech. We have lots of microphones. Everything seems to work. And uh, it's, it's been good. Uh, today is the anniversary of the Heartland Cafe. 36 years old today. We, um, on this day we opened to 43 customers. It was a Wednesday. Uh, it was a Wednesday. And there were 43 people. We kept telling them the food will be ready soon. <laughs> and uh, we were trying to clean up, wash our hands, get ready. We've been building the place out. And uh, 43 people came and they've been coming ever since. And we are so grateful to that. And some of you may have uh, seen either on Facebook or on YouTube, not YouTube, but or the, Tribune. the Tribune, there was an article announcing that uh, Tom Rosenfeld, who owns Earth First Farms <coughs> up in Berrien, Michigan, uh, he is our new partner, he's the managing partner. Katie and I, after 36 years, are really grateful that we have a younger person uh, of great enthusiasm uh, and ability coming on board and uh, we encourage you all to come up to the Heartland tonight. We're having uh, uh, some good music and then tomorrow morning we do the Heartland uh, Heat of the Summer 5K Run. You have to be at the restaurant by 8 a.m. and we'll go over to Loyola Park and run around. So it's a great weekend to be in Rogers Park and the new Morse Lunt L stop opened yeah. up at two minutes to midnight last night. Is it amazing? Uh, so was there was there a party up on the L, L uh, platform, Michael? Uh, that's what I heard from uh, one of our guests, Bob Fuller. He wasn't there either. He was. Uh, Sound asleep. No, he was at a wedding show. rehearsal, I think. But, oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I know uh, I, I went by the Heartland close to 10 p.m. and uh, there was some great music playing and the L looked like a train stopped there, maybe in advance, uh, but it was great because those of you who come regularly know that for the past three years we have had construction on our corner during the busiest times of the year for our, our business uh, and it has, we're all for infrastructure improvement and we have to pay the cost. Uh, but it has been a challenge to the business end of things and uh, hopefully now that the new L stop is working in there, bike racks are there and there's parking over at the corner of Morse and Ashland that uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of ways to be at the heartland. Yeah. Well, hey, Katie, you're making a face. Uh, it's just sorry. like it's just like <laughs> for the past 36 years. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I make faces at Michael. I can't help myself. I was born Irish Catholic, and uh, that's what we do. When we're not talking, we're making faces. Anyway, I want to say I'm I'm really um, grateful for the Heartland Cafe's existence and for you, Michael, as a partner. Uh, Ditto. Despite the face makings that I do, um, I can't imagine it wouldn't exist without you, and I know you'd say the same to me, but mostly it wouldn't exist without those people who love the Heartland. So well, thank you very much to all of grateful. you. And uh, t this little radio show is an outgrowth of that. We were asked by Loyola some 20 years ago to do a live show from our stage, which I hope we again do. But it's kind of fun to be doing it from the studio and acting like we're pros and all that good stuff. The man laughing uh, on the third mic here is a friend and return visitor to the show, Mr. Don Washington. Good morning, Don. Morning. I love you guys. Actually, Don was on the show when Obama came on. He was, that same he, day. Yeah, on the same day. That was when Obama was running for the Senate. Perfect. And we're waiting to get you back, Barack, to come on while you're running he's in for the president. He's in the city this weekend. Or will yeah, be. I don't know if he's coming to the heartland, but yeah, sooner or later he will. It could happen. It could happen. So, so Don, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show once again. And uh, the way I build it was that Don Washington will join us to discuss all things political going on in Chicago, Ooh, in the country, in the, the world. And <laughs> just so people know, you are the host of Mayoral Tutorial, the weekly interactive, agitational, informational, educational, satirical town hall meeting. So start by telling us what the hell is 
mayoral tutorial? Yeah. Well, it's all of the above, as you just said. But basically, we bring together people on some piece of public policy. It could be everything from civil liberties, to labor rights, to teacher's rights. We bring them all together. We play games. We tell funny stories. We do a little stand-up. It's very interactive. We do a media quiz and make sure you haven't been too poisoned. And then we have a, a public policy expert or perhaps um, a politician of some sort who's responsible for that stuff coming to talk directly to you, the audience. Well, I got a question about what getting poisoned by media. Because uh, I was just out running around on the Great Plains and the, the prairie and uh, got into a lot of discussion with my son David over uh, the way I approached people and the dialogue I was engendering. Mm. Um, and actually this morning I was sitting here reading the New York Times, we were looking at an article about Tommy Thompson up there in Wisconsin, and you basically, uh, as critical as I am of the New York Times, you, you kind of gave it a real diss. And I'm just wondering, is, am I poisoned by reading it this morning? Well, or do I have a little more information well, than you let's, want to cover? Let's, let's, let's just think of it this way for the New York Times. Um, they're doing a story, they're, so there's a primary, right? Primary in Wisconsin. Primary in yeah. Wisconsin. It's a senatorial primary. Who's going to be the Republican challenger to Tammy Baldwin of the Democrats? So they're really focused on the Republican um, primary. So there's four guys running in this race who have the exact same views on almost everything. Yes, yeah, little white guys. So, so it's so. What is your flavor of like conservative white guy? Is that the thrust of the story? No. The thrust of the story is there's a four-way race. It's very tight. They don't tell you about their policy differences. They don't tell you about like how they're the same. They don't tell you about what it means for the politics of what's going on. Are the same. they telling you? Well, you know, if you, it's, it's he, neither he or I have read the article. I see. Well, let, 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 let me be clear. <laughs> in other words, we're just talking in the microphones. Let, 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 let me be clear. Give me um, piece of our I don't mind. know a lot about this primary. I want to go on right. I don't know a lot about this primary. I do know a lot about Tommy Thompson. Yeah. I do know a lot about Jeff Fitzgerald. They're the same guy. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot about two of the guys in the rings. Hey. The other two guys, there's an investment banker who I just found out about today who's a political novice. Right? Talking That's about, what the picture says. Talking about the same guy. <laughs> the breaking news this morning, well, it was actually breaking at about 1 or 2 in the morning last night. Uh, when by I thought, 10, they speculated. Um, mm. Is that uh, the Republican nominee, Mitt Romney, has picked his sidekick for the race. And um, oh, he does look like him. Uh, Mr. Paul Ryan, the man, the man who uh, brought us the the most retrograde uh, budget yeah. suggestions ever yeah. in my life. Um, you know, the kill Medicare, Medicaid, uh, leave them, just let them fend for themselves kind of guy sure. budget. Uh, and he's also years. from Wisconsin. I feel we have to go to Wisconsin, I guess, this, this election season. Maybe an exorcism? Again. An exorcism, maybe? maybe that be I don't What's know. your take on Paul Ryan? Um, briefly, uh, that guy put together a budget proposal that, um, by everything in it, is antithetical to what it means to have a, an actual functioning American society. It's anti democratic. And I don't mean with a big D, I mean with a little tiny D. Mm -hmm. It's anti republic. It's against the idea of the common wheel. And the fact that that thing is taken seriously when clearly all it does is um, increase deficits and decrease public uh, public goods. Um, is the, the, amazing. It's amazing and the way to look at it for me is is that Paul Ryan is not a public servant. servant. He is auditioning to become Mitt Romney. So in some ways it's great that he is now Mitt Romney's running mate. I think it'll help us. You can learn from the master. Uh, let me ask you another question. The way question. Sarah Palin helped that, us four that, years ago. That was a regional <laughs> question. Now I'm going to go to a local question. There's some uh, some rumor going around, uh, a little speculation that the uh, superintendent of schools, is that what he's called? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, may or may not stick around. Anything on Mr. this? Mr. Brazil? J.C. Brazil. Who threw out Brazil. the ball at the Brazil. Cubs game yesterday. You know, it's really interesting. Um, I, I heard, a short tenure. Well, I don't. Well, first of all, we don't know if it's true. We don't it's know a rumor. It's true. Okay. So I, I heard this like last week, and then I saw it again yesterday, day before yesterday, on on uh, Fred Clancy's blog and some other places. And I guess here's the thing that really that that sticks with me. Um, it's twofold. One, if J.C. Bazard does leave, this will be the second time that a bunch of teachers, over ninety percent of them, didn't like him mm -hmm. or his policies. Right. This will be the second time it happened when he was in New Jersey, and it happened here. Another thing that struck me is, 
I, I like to look at things in context. Do you realize that J.C. Bazaar is just another of all the people who have left CPS, who are like high ranking people? Um, uh, Naomi Donoso, she left. Diana Ferguson left. Barbara Bowman left. Jamaica Rose left. Andrea Sains left. All of these people left, and they're all like high ranking people at CPS. It's well, like that Jamaica place. Doing? Jamaica was, um, what is she? She was the community of, uh, family engagement officer. Huh. I mean, that's a lot of people who just have left over there who have some sense of, um, they're all responsible for the public in some way. Huh. Or for the finances. And they've all left. Were they assigned by the by Broussard, or were they, did they predate him? Well, some of them, um, like Naomi, was recruited by Ron. A lot of these people were brought here by the mayor. Jamico was hired by Ron. I would think so because she right? was still at one two right. years ago. So all of the a lot of these people um, were brought here by the mayor, and now mm -hmm. they're leaving. It's sort of, I think, what that speaks to is what does the mayor spend his time on in schools? Uh, SB seven, where he basically beat up the teachers, and then HB forty two seventy seven, where he basically focused on um, trying to find more ways to fund the charter schools. He's Don's referring to House bills and Senate bills when he's. Says that I'm sorry, Senate Bill, Senate Bill That's okay. 7, House Bill. Let's, make sure all right. All right, let's, the let's talk about the, talk about the teachers for a minute. Uh, first of all, we are greatly indebted for in our own lives for all the wonderful teachers we all had. Amen. And uh, Amen. I would like to, uh, I did see a, an, uh, an article that uh, the teachers union uh, has told the teachers to, to prepare for a strike. Yeah. 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 And, then, you know, they did take a strike vote. Uh, Rom had engineered a bill through the the legislature that made them have a seventy five percent yes to in order to do so, and they did it. They got it. They had ninety eight percent. It was very impressive, mm -hmm. and uh, so we think uh, they're getting ready. What's your take on but it? But then, wait a minute. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Wait, right after they took that vote and got ninety some percent of the teachers to say yeah, we we'd strike, they also came up with this little okay, we'll do this. Um, Skipping and Dancing with Ron uh, about a decision made to solve the longer day issue and the extra pay and well, bringing back some of the laid off teachers in order to do that. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think something for us to really think about is, is that there are a couple of, of like foundational things to consider here. There are a number of issues that are not allowed to be discussed that the teacher <coughs> really wants to discuss, right? There are you know, <coughs> issues. Um, that deal with like pay and tenure and that sort of thing. The teachers union wants to put on the table as part of the negotiations. So that's one thing. The second thing is that, um, and I, I think it's really important to get your mind all the way around this. You got to really get a hold of it. Oh, yeah. My mind is getting your ready. Mind, is your mind getting My ready? mind is spreading is its arms to get around it. I think the other thing for us to really get our minds like clear about is that because there are other issues that need to be discussed. That are, that are quote unquote not allowed to be discussed by by state law, you have sort of the makings of a really intense impasse where the mayor is not interested in talking to unions, he wants to break the union. And the union is interested in talking about things that the law says the mayor didn't have to talk about. Right. That that could lead to a real Tricky. volatile situation. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Because he's not interested in really talking to them. Mm -hmm. He would like to just break them, I think. I think that's how he's acting. SB7 was designed to force them into a situation where they had to work in conditions where they couldn't strike, and they still did. Yeah. That's kind of amazing. Um, I think that the... I, I, don't, I don't think that he can let uh, the union get broke. I don't think he can support that. Why I think not? he can. I mean, I think he can make them feel, or, or try and make them marginalized. Try to marginalize the union folks. Well, let's 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 look at it from his perspective. What is the mayor really focused on? What's he trying to do? What's he really focused on? What's he spending his his, uh, his time on? Don't ask me. I mean, he spent his time on. A I bill. think he's he's doing the whole charter school thing. Right. right? These are the sorts of things where charter schools are part of the privatization push, and the idea, the the primary idea of privatization is. You're actually cutting the unions to pieces. You're you're creating situations where people are under less strict labor laws, right? You're, yeah. That's one way you keep costs down. So the union is actually a block to actually expanding charter schools, and I think that's going to be a problem for him and for his friends that want to invest in building out the charter school market system. Apparently, also, not a problem in the 49th ward right now. 
Yeah, there's a new charter school coming in and some people are not really happy about it. Um, it's actually going to go into St. Scholastica, which is a real dichotomy, I think. You have these uh, nuns who have stood up to the Vatican and then uh, now that they're closing St. Scholastica and they have this big facility, they're probably renting it out to a school that uh, many people think could uh, end up uh, pulling a majority Latino kids away from other schools and sort of uh, a roadblock to <clears throat> the you know the multinationalism that we like to say goes on in our ward. I think I think something because um, you know we know Steve Koch or Steve Koch I think it's pronounced Koch. That um, the deputy mayor. The new deputy mayor. Yeah. I think there's a couple of things we want to you know a couple of things I want to just raise up for us to really think about just as a as a city right. The whole concept of privatization is that you're going to take people and you're going to pay them less and give them less benefits and then they're going to deliver an exceptional public service. You're, the other half of the concept is, is that you're going to take a public good that needs to have a baseline of excellence and you're going to try to do it on the cheap. You can't expect a public good to perform in a positive way if that's what you do. Because public goods are not about profit. They're not about efficiency. They're about effectiveness, and they're about creating the glue and the foundation for a social system that's a functional